This is me, Justical, a Dutchman with zero competitive earnings in Fortnite. And this, this is Mitro, also a Dutchman, but with close to a million dollars earned from Fortnite. Yes, we can clearly see that Mitro is the superior Dutchman. However, he's not in the same prime as he used to be. He's been seeing a decline in viewership, is losing subscribers, and hasn't earned that much competitively in the last year. So what happened to him? Well, we're going to obviously find that out in this video. Dimitri played a variety of games as a kid, but really started getting competitive when he started playing Call of Duty. And when we look at his YouTube channel, then we can confirm this statement. Call of Duty was the first game that Big Mitro started posting on YouTube in December of 2015. And before you guys tell me to touch grass for calling him Big Mitro, that was the name that he went by. Accompanied by a classic 2015 gaming intro. Now these videos showcased Mitro getting nuclears, winning high kill games, and even hitting trick shots. However, in 2016, he switched over to PC and started playing more games like CSGO and H1Z1. In conclusion, Dimitri was incredibly skilled at playing games competitively, and this was about to change his life. In September of 2017, Fortnite Battle Royale got released, and Mitro tried it out like many others at the time. He started playing it religiously and uploaded high kill game after high kill game on his YouTube channel, even getting world records and playing against massive players like Svenels and Dakotas. Now these videos are what started the growth of his career, as one even managed to rack up 6.6 .6 million views, and it caused him to get invited to tournaments and other Fortnite events. He started his competitive Fortnite journey with one of the first ever Fortnite tournaments, the Blitz Solo Showdown, getting first place, which then got followed up by him joining his first ever esports team, Atlantis, then got invited to the Summer Skirmish, where he won two weeks and earned more than $100,000 in all of the weeks, after which he then made another $154,000 in earnings during the rest of 2018. Yes, Mitro, a 16 year old teenager already earned $250,000 in competitive earnings before the Fortnite competitive scene was even established. At that age I was still debating if I would spend my $5 allowance money on a can of soda or a sausage roll. Anyways, this was a very successful year for him, as he climbed to 800 average viewers on Twitch as well. But 2019 was around the corner. Corner, and it would become a very crucial year for the growth of his career. We were now entering Mitro's prime, but Dimitri himself wasn't quite aware of this yet. Now don't get me wrong, earning more than $20,000 and reaching 3,000 average viewers on Twitch in the first months of 2019 was already impressive. But there was one announcement that could potentially elevate his competitive earnings and career to a whole new level. The Fortnite World Cup. Now Mitro was obviously interested, and after trying out Kuna as a potential duo during various test tournaments, it was decided. Kuna was officially not going to be his duo. Why? Well, he tried out with someone that would change his life forever. Yes, the one and only Mongra. They started playing together, won the Lux Cup, got third in the World Cup warm-up, and then qualified for the World Cup finals already in the second week by getting second place. Now, Mitro didn't end up qualifying for the solo event, but he was going to New York together with Mongra, and now had the chance to prove himself as one of the best players in the world. They did incredibly well by securing 6th place, meaning that Mitro walked away with an enormous amount of $225,000. This meant that he now had over $500,000 in competitive earnings. But that wasn't it, because he added another $194,000 on top of that in the rest of 2019. And this was earned in the form of many Trio Cash Cup wins, Trio FNCS domination with Benji Fishy and Mongral, destroying Soto Cash Cups, and getting 13th in the squad's FNCS finals. This ultimately resulted in a total of around $600,000 in competitive earnings, which was absolutely insane. He was now getting over 1,000 average viewers on Twitch, sometimes speaking at over 5,000, and teamed up with CRR at the end of the year after their top 15 squads FNCS performance. Oh, and of course, he left Team Atlantis as well. He got released after hashtag Free Metro went viral on Twitter because of his bad contract. So, a lot was happening. Mitro was now a free agent, found a new duo partner in CRR, started creating an absolutely humongous following, and was still only 17 years old. So how did he maintain this momentum in 2020? 
Well, there is one thing that we learned at the end of 2019. Metro didn't really like streaming. He only streamed around 2 hours in August, September and October and didn't stream at all in November and December. And this trend continued in 2020. He streamed for 7 hours in January and then stopped streaming again for 2 months. However, big things were in the works. Because at the end of January, he joined Team Liquid, one of the biggest esports organizations in the world. Now this was also the time where Chapter 2 was in full effect. And it was a chapter where Mitro would become known for taking his incredible W keying and fighting skill to the next level. 30 kills, 23 kills, 33 kills, just multiple videos of him absolutely destroying lobbies. And everybody loved watching it. He started getting consistent 1 million plus views on his highlight videos and when he returned to streaming in April, he averaged 9000 viewers. But that was not all. Because Chapter 2 Season 2 was a season where Mitro and CRR shocked the community. They would absolutely steamroll every open tournament. Getting first place in many sessions of the FNCS weeks and getting top 3 in the daily duo tournaments 10 times. But did his playstyle also work in the FNCS finals? Well, no. Because they ultimately only got 41st in the duo FNCS finals. However, all of this didn't matter. As Mitro's views and subscribers on YouTube started exploding. And his Twitch was now averaging between 5 to 7 thousand viewers. But it was time for something even bigger. That is because Trio FNCS was announced. And Mitro was experimenting with different trios. Until he found the best one yet. Tayson, Mongro, and the man Mitro himself teamed up and ended up winning the entire Fortnite championship. Making Mitro another $37,000. And causing him to average a whopping 11,000 viewers on Twitch that month. But little did he know, it was the last time that he would see himself winning more than $10,000 from a Fortnite tournament. Mitro had a great year in 2020, adding $100,000 to his total competitive earnings. But bad news was coming in 2021. You guessed it, Tayson left the trio, leaving Mongrel and Mitro trying out with different players. And this is where Mitro's momentum came to an end. In FNCS week 1, they failed to make round 3 together with Benji Fishy, who left for a different trio after this. And then in FNCS week 2, they even failed to get out of round 1 of qualifiers with Quinton. This was bad, and Mongrel and Mitro took scrim a lot more serious after this with Ibuhai, but they still couldn't make round 4 in the grand finals. Before Mongro and Mitro split, they tried out with Milan as a final attempt, but grand finals was once again not made. Now Mitro was obviously struggling to get back into his momentum, as he didn't make the solo FNCS All-Star finals either. But it wasn't all over yet, far from actually. He had another all-time high of average Twitch viewers in March with more than 12,000, and teamed up with CRR and X8 this time to finally make it to an FNCS semi-finals again. But it still wasn't really what he wanted. Well, that finally came in October, when he got first place in the FNCS semi-finals together with Aryan and Milan, and placed top 25 in the grand finals. Now this wasn't anything like the first place domination we were used to, but it was at least something. Mitro finished off 2021 with only $4,295 in competitive earnings, going from earning $250,000 in 2018, to $450,000 in 2019, to $100,000 in 2019. 2020 and now only $4,295 in 2021. Obviously, this wasn't great. And although the price pool has decreased a lot over the years, it wasn't the main cause of this massive decline. And not only that, but he took an almost four month break on YouTube in August. And when he returned, his views halved, with him losing at least 1,000 subscribers every month until the end of the year. So what happened to Mitro after this? Did he get back on his feet? So far in 2022, Mitro has played 17 tournaments, ending in zero competitive earnings with an average placement of 1,922nd. And played these tournaments with a variety of duos like Freemok, Mongrel, Milan, Aryan and recently CRR again. Now this isn't particularly great, but he still streams an average of 20 hours per month on Twitch for an average of 3,200 viewers, which is actually really good. And now uploads almost daily on his YouTube channel as well. The only problem is that his views have now dropped significantly. He would first get anywhere from 200,000 to 1.7 million views per video, while he now gets less than 10,000. Also still losing 2,000 subscribers every other month. Now why is this? Well, I think it's a combination of people getting bored of simple unedited gameplay, and also the fact that Mitro isn't really among the top competitors anymore. There are so many pros consistently performing nowadays that when it comes to gameplay highlights, people only want to watch the best of the best, unless some form of personality or content creation is involved. Now Twitch is 
a completely different audience of course, hence him still averaging 2000 viewers. But even that is currently going in a downwards trend. Now does Mitro care about this? Probably not. Does he have to do something about this? Not at all. He still signed to Team Liquid with a good paying contract, makes money from Twitch and a little bit from YouTube and he still plays all the tournaments. I'm pretty sure that he will make earnings soon as we're only in April. And who knows what happens? Mitro has a lot of talent so I could see him absolutely popping off this year despite the circumstances. Now at last but not least, the final and most important question of this video, will we have to put him into the NFT Hall of Fame? Well, no. He hasn't really switched over to NFTs. And although I have found the NFT in his Instagram profile picture, the two wallets that are potentially connected to it aren't that stacked. So I'm pretty sure that he is not that involved. Unless he has a secret wallet of course. Now this was the video, please leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new and I hope you have an amazing day.